For those new to the channel, I am Stockmo, an old financial advisor and educator. I used to teach the high school and college level classes, marketing, finance, all that good stuff. Now I do this YouTube thing, and all I ever ask, hit the like button, hit the subscribe for me. We got a really good positive community, and I remember way back, a little over a year ago, that we were around 100 subscribers, and now we're up there 590 something thousand, which just blows my mind. I'm very thankful for that. Now, we do have some great things to take advantage of. Of course, the Moomoo -moo link down below, right in the description. Get a free share of Neo right now, up 25% yesterday. You still get it for free. All you gotta do is deposit a dollar or more and take advantage of this link. Put 100 or more in, you'll get a free share of X Pong on top of it. It also is up that much. You get them both for free. Take advantage of that. It's one of the best opportunities. Of course, look at this one too. Gemini, they have $20 in free Bitcoin for trading 100 or more. If you have not taken advantage of it, do it. They have Sandbox over there. They do not have Sandbox over at Webull, Robinhood, and Coinbase. Once it gets in there, I expect it to double from the current price. And what is the current price? Look at this over the last day, 24 hours, 13% up. This is why I like it. I do believe it's going to hit 8 to 10 by the end of this year, and this is why I think you should take advantage of that link. Of course, and I do have the Patreon link down below. Come on over, check it out. We got the dividend, new dividend portfolio started, 45000 in that. The overall portfolio was up about 40000 50000 yesterday. It was an awesome day, one of them ones you love. And you can follow along with all that and the, and the stocks I'm buying and selling and the private Discord, thousands of members. Now, take a look. We'll start with the portfolio, the VOO. We are still down. Down. But check this out. Remember how bad it was in the beginning of the last of this week. We were discussing it. It was horrible. Everything was red. In a matter of two days, this is why I said don't try to time the market. I'm probably the, I, I, I haven't really heard of a lot of people out there doing this, but I've been saying, I believe that this week is the bottom. And so far, using all the historical stuff I pointed out in the videos, I showed you the geopolitical event history, 22 days after a major event we hit bottom, that's playing into this week. I showed you the 1% drop in the S&P, but we also had the VIX drop 5% or more, that plays into it. And then we showed the death cross of the S&P 500 as well, showing that over the next 12 months, all three said we should be up a ton of cash with multiple ones saying we are right around that bottom. And so this is what I'm talking about. We use history to help define our, our investment strategies, learn from history, don't make the same mistakes as prior times. So I put it out there on tape and I knew if I missed, people would be hounding me, the trolls would come out. But if we hit and we did the right things with our investment dollars, like I've been loading up over the last few days, it paid off big time today. And for those who follow me over at the Patreon, congratulations. I know we are in there having a ball today. I highly suggest coming over and joining us. The community is great, especially on days like this, you're gonna feel like you're with family. So I do recommend coming over and joining us. That link's down below. So here's the YouTube, just VOO. Notice this, before today, it was all red. After a day, one day, maybe two days, we'll say, this thing has blown up to the point where we're only down 1%, even though the overall portfolio is, or I should say from day one, we would be down 8% if we put it all in on day one. This is dollar cost averaging, my friends. This is why it works out and it helps reduce that risk. The conservative portfolio I make, and I, I said this one should outperform, if it's red, we should lose less. If it's green, we may not make as much because it's a lower risk portfolio. And then the high risk, of course, we know the high risk. Oh, this is still down 10%, but it was down 20 something percent at one point. You know, Tesla, DraftKings, they're coming back. They came back big time, Neo in there. Uh, Spotify, look at this, Upstart. I put that in this week, 21% up already. Loving that play, I knew that would do well. Uh, and there you go, so there you go. We're, we're having some moves, uh, moves in there. The YouTube crypto, I believe is now, uh, no, not yet. Uh, 2.48% and that gets us where we're at. So we're, we're, we're getting there. It's only down 27 bucks. So there's your update on this. And then we move into what's going on. Take a look at this. I just want to share this one more time from yesterday. For those who were not short the market, they were long. You got paid big time. And this is the danger 
of shorting some of these stocks, jumping on the bandwagon, if you will. You look and see in the markets, only 1.5, 2.2, 3.7. Remember I got into that TQQQ? That paid off nicely. Russell, your T, URTY, got into that triple leverage. That paid off nicely. VIX dropping double digits, finally starting to collapse. And yes, I do believe we have hit the bottom and we are now rolling up. Will we have red days? Of course we're gonna have red days. We have lots of red candles and green candles but the green candles will dominate moving forward. And so after a big day like this, I would expect a little red maybe tomorrow or Friday, and then hopefully leading into Monday of next week, we start to see some additional recovery, some big days out there. This is one of these days I absolutely love. Neo being my second largest position behind my Tesla position, is closing in on my Tesla position because uh, obviously when I have uh, Tesla above my NEO, but NEO goes up 25%, it's actually getting really close to overtaking my Tesla position now. And so we'll see how that goes. I think I still got about 12 grand in Tesla stock above and beyond what I got in NEO stock even at, after the big gain with NEO. So that's the good news and we'll see how that works out. Uh, as we look at some other things here, you will see DraftKings up 13.58. I'll say it again. I think DraftKings is going to easily win the gambling industry in the U.S. And we'll see how that plays out over the next five to 10 years because it's going to take that long to get all the states on board. Five to 10 years. And then at that point, you will see real money being made by DraftKings. And it's going to be huge. You're going to look back at the chance of buying DraftKings back when it was in the teens and just think, why didn't I load up as much as possible? Because that's what I personally believe. Now, I'm not telling you to run out and buy buy it, I just believe we will look back on time and say, wow, that what a cheap price at one time. Now, they still have expenses. There's a lot of expenses in growing, and that's things I'm watching. So a lot of good things here going on. Lucid, Tesla, riding higher. So if I at the party, just not having fun. And that, that's something we want to see more fun with. And so we see a lot of good things here. Now, what happened? Well, we know that the Fed came out and they said by next year, the projections show rates hitting 2.75% and they don't have any rate increases for 2024. So the pain will be through 2022 and 2023 in terms of rate increases and then they should top out and then eventually, eventually we should be okay uh, at that point and we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, this would be the highest mar uh, since March of 2008. We know that back then we had the real, the real estate, the real estate crash, everything, the financial destruction. We almost had the entire financial global economy just crash down, uh, but we, we survived it. The world came together and now we have a new system in terms of supporting the global economic situations out there. So good things going on there. And the Fed basically, and I believe it was something to the effect of they don't see an elevated risk for, for the recession in terms of what they believe they're seeing. Now, uh, we know the big, the big financial houses out there putting in about, you know, we'll say 25 to 35% chance of, an, of a recession. I still not sure. I'm not sure if, because energy dropped 30%, I think that gets us out of that, hey, there's a good chance. Now with energy dropping that much, well, there you go. That tells us that we're looking at a little better future if we can keep those energy prices down. And that's something I am watching because gas is still up there. Gas is affecting everyday spenders out there around the world. And it's funny because we see 30% drop in uh, oil, but gas is still moving like one penny down. Like they don't, the, the businesses don't want to pass that profit back on to us. They want to keep it for themselves. And that annoys me. Gas should drop just as quickly as it rose when oil went up. It should drop just as quickly as the oil drops, but they don't do that. Why? And there's should, somebody should be looking into that because that is affecting the U S economy for sure. So as we take a look at Neo yesterday, it was a great day. It was up 25.59%. Bears were being cooked into burgers finally. And what the, to me, what this does, we got to that moment of capitulation with NEO. You can see it up. Uh, and I don't know where it's at right now as we make this video for today. We'll see how it comes out, if it's still green. If it's green at all, that is solid. Because after you go up 25% on a stock and see it continue to be green, that's good news. Now, over the last five days, though, this is why. Even after five days, you're still red.
Okay, so we're still down, but this is the moment of capitulation, $13 a share. And now we move up from there and we're up 41% off that high. So that is the bottom. There's no doubt in my mind, that's the bottom. Remember this company has billions and billions of dollars on hand in cash. I think it was like 7 billion last check. And so put it together, this company is okay in terms of how much money they have and how much they, as they move on with their expansion. So I'm feeling good about it. Will they need to raise money down the road? Of course, even Tesla raised some money just, what was it, 2020 when everything was flying through the roof? You're gonna see companies go out there and raise funds, especially young companies like this who are, who are aggressively expanding overseas. They wanna be in the US by 2025. We already see uh, help wanted out there. If you're looking at the jobs they're looking for in the US, and we know that the government of China came out yesterday and big news said that they feel like they are moving in the right direction with the US to make sure that all the issues that you're seeing for the, the the listings, the auditing are being taken care of. They feel good about that. And they, in their words, we support overseas listings. That was big. And they wanna aggressively finish up the technology, the privacy stuff in China that they're dealing with with these tech companies. They said they wanna get that done and they're gonna support the market. It was so much positive and so aggressive in their statements. I have not seen this kind of aggressive statement by the Chinese government in a long time. I'm talking many years. And so I was kind of thrown back. And I think after you see trillions wiped away there, that they're thinking, okay, we need to get our handle on this situation. And then of course, the other the other concern still, Russia and China, uh, just how far are they willing to help Russia? And I think if I'm in their shoes, I'm backing away from that situation. What was probably told to them to be a week long, maybe two weeks tops to go in and take care of this is turning into an ugly thing and the world is turning against Russia. And the, the question becomes, how much do they wanna actually support that when the entire world almost is against it? And so that's something they gotta be aware of because I think countries would take, absolutely take uh, economic aim at them if they decided to do something like that. So we'll see how it plays out. I don't think it's gonna be in it. I think they're gonna say, hey, we could be an economic powerhouse or we can risk it all to help out this uh, help out Russia, and I don't see that happening. So I think that's a concern that people have, and that's that's in this price, the risk we're seeing, but I don't see that playing out like the, the most negative out there see it playing out. I believe they're gonna be smart enough to realize, let's not cut off our nose despite our face. And so I think that's what you're gonna see. And now we know they're gonna be very aggressive. I'm talking, in my mind, the next 90 days, they're gonna be aggressively supporting this market. They're gonna do what they need to do to help over short, uh, uh, over overseas listings, I was gonna say offshore and overseas combined there, but you're gonna see a lot of good things happening from China. So yeah, the stocks are still risky. That risk is still there. I still say NEO would be trading at an 80 to $100 billion market cap if it was a US stock. So the fact that it's only at 23 billion tells you I think this stock could easily uh, triple from current price easily in the next 12 months. But does that mean it's gonna happen? No, we gotta get through COVID, see how the Russia-China thing goes. There's a lot of uh, things out there we still gotta watch but it's starting to finally look better. And of course, Tesla. And you gotta wonder, because if China supports their economy, they support their market, remember, money is being made for them. And if you're like, I don't care about China, and you own Tesla stock, you should care. They get 25%, if not more, of their sales in China. If China suffers, so does Tesla. If China is good, Tesla stock goes through the roof because they get a lot of money out of that out of that country and I expect it to absolutely continue to go higher as we move forward. So Tesla being my biggest holding, I have a feeling should do very well through this year with China finally coming out. And we know the US is gonna push ahead with a lot of EV things. And I, I just believe it's in a really good place right now. And we'll see as uh, Berlin gets up and running over there with their new factory. So good things going on. Take a look at the price estimates here. 182, 182% upside potential for NEO. This is on tip ranks, link down below. And I also have uh, Tesla here, where you can see 37% upside potential. I get that. I have it about 1250. I think 1250 by the end of this year. And Neo, we'll see where that goes. Like I said, I could see this going up 100% or 200% from current price in the next 12 months. And we'll see if that holds true based on the current 
variables out there. These things change, folks, and even the analysts, they had this as 70 something dollars a couple of weeks ago. I got it, they changed it, of course, because we didn't know Russia was gonna invade in Ukraine. We didn't know there was gonna be an economic war. We didn't know all these things. We didn't know COVID was gonna shut down half, you know, I always, I'm exaggerating, but a lot of China. There's all these things you don't know. So as we go through and we adjust our prices, understand I am still very, very bullish on NEO and especially Tesla. Like I said, that's my number one position for good reason. And so we'll see how it goes. But NEO could overtake them. If they have another 25% gain day, it'll be worth more than my Tesla position. So we're gonna wait and see how this plays out. I'm pretty excited about it. And if you haven't done it yet, take advantage of that free share of NEO down below with Moomoo. All you gotta do is deposit a dollar or more. If you want to get a free share of Xpeng and NEO, put a hundred or more in. I absolutely love that. And I told you about the Gemini link down there, $20 in free Bitcoin, just for trading 100 or more using that link. And on top of that, you can get Sandbox. So I would pull the 20 in Bitcoin, put it into Sandbox, and you gotta trade 100 or more as well. So you might even be able to buy like 100 in Sandbox. That should be able to grow nicely. And of course, I do have the Patreon. We have a private Discord. We had a ball yesterday. It was very positive, a great place to go. I highly recommend coming over. I'm telling you, you're gonna love this community. It is easily one of the most positive places you can go. I appreciate you stopping by. Now let's get out there and make some money.